All right, I, I got this question from a young lady, and it goes basically like this. Jamie, how do you think about or explain uh, extra dimensions? Uh, and you know, it's a little bit more explanation. And then P.S. Jamie, you're so hot and sexy, I love you. Okay, I may have, may have added that last part. But thank you for the compliment. That was wonderful, even though I just made it up. Uh, so, extra dimensions. This is like... You know, the magical physics of, like, beyond three spatial dimensions that we're told about and we're told they're difficult to understand and no, no one can really see it in their mind or, ah, no one understands what's going on, but mathematically it's provable that it's there kind of stuff. Well, like most of this stuff, it's not as complicated as people usually try to make it seem. Whenever someone's trying to make something too complicated, all they're doing is trying to say, I want you to feel stupider than me, so I'm going to say this in a really complicated way that doesn't make sense. And to someone who's, to, who understands the stuff, that just makes the explainer sound stupid. So stop doing that, dudes. All right, <clears throat> so just to get a, a quick review of what, what everyone basically understands, we've got three spatial dimensions, you know, in space. We've got length... Right? Now if you take that line and stretch it out this way so it's like a flat plane, you've got height, so that's your two dimensions to get area. Now if you take this whole thing and pull it out to have depth, then you've got your square here, now you've got a cube, and that's a three-dimensional item. So that's three spatial dimensions. and Alright, now we've got another one that's a little harder to explain, but not too bad too bad, which is time. Now I can't go like this and say, look, this is us traveling through, this is time because I'm always in the same time. I can't make my hand go forward in time and have you see it. But anyway, I'm currently talking to you and now I'm a couple seconds later than I was a few seconds ago. Uh, that's just because I'm traveling through time. This is fourth dimension. At least I'm numbering it fourth right now, so whatever. Uh, but, you know, with time, we, we're pretty limited in how we can deal with it. We just go one direction, and that's it. But it's still there. So, how do you think about 5th and 6th and 20th and billionth dimensions? Okay. Imagine yourself. Okay, there's me. In a library. Oh, okay, I'm in a library. Now, imagine yourself in a library in one of those aisles of books where you've got all books on this side and books on this side, and this skinny little aisle where you can walk this way and where you can walk that way. Or maybe we'll put it this way, where you can walk this way and that way, and you've got books here and books there. So this is you in a, basically experiencing a one-dimensional experience, because you can only go this way and that way. Obviously, you still have all your dimensions. Now stop and now turn to face the books. Now you've got this, this plane of of book labels. So you're not experiencing the books yet or anything, you're just experiencing two dimensions because they, the books are out this way, the books are up and down, there's a big wall of books, that's a two-dimensional wall of books. Now you take your finger and pull on one of the books and you pull this book off the plane into another dimension and it's a, it's a big fat thing, it keeps getting bigger, except it's not really getting bigger because the other dimension was already there, you just couldn't see it. But anyway, you pull out this three-dimensional book. Now you've got another dimension. And we're just putting time aside for all this, because you, you need the time to be able to even talk about any of this. Uh, so then you've got three dimensions, right? Now what happens if you open the book and start reading about a young princess who was born to a king and queen in the land of whatever and was then cursed by an evil witch? Well, where does this king and queen live? Now in your head, you're imagining this king and queen, and they live in some sort of three-dimensional world with time as well. So where are they? I mean, they're, they're clearly not on the book. They're not taking up any space here. Now this is where people usually try to make it a lot more complicated. Uh, but it's really not. You've got this universe that's held inside this book. Uh, it's not just held inside the book, now it's in your head, like you come up with the idea, 
And maybe there's one there and in your head, and they're two separate universes, because someone else is going to go read this book, and they're going to have their own idea of what this universe looks like. But anyway, when you look at this, uh, when you start reading this book, it's got three dimensions. And maybe you'll flip through a few pages and say, wait, I don't like how what happened in that page. I'm going to go back a page and edit it in my head, and then keep going, because I just want that guy to have a different fate than what he just had. So then you can, you're going through time in the book, and you can jump back, and you can write a new thing, and you've just created two timelines, two parallel worlds, two parallel universes inside this thing. You just created it two-dimensional time inside this thing. Now, you're not creating anything in, in, uh, in our physical space or, you know, in, uh, well, you're, I guess you may be creating, no, you're not even creating anything in our time. You're not creating anything that we can touch or interact with in any way other than just think about it. But when you think about that, do you imagine that the king and queen are sitting in their chairs thinking about you thinking about them? No, according to that king and queen, they're just as real as anyone else. That's their universe. Um, <clears throat> so inside this book, you've got a whole set of dimensions on its own. And you can, you can, you can reread pages and create a different one. You can create multiple different universes in this book, either separated by different timelines, or you can just create totally different everythings. Um, now, come back to our world here. Oh, I should also mention, now in that world, in your mind, you don't think that this king and queen and the, the princess and the evil witch are the only people in this universe. And you don't, you don't necessarily think this is the only planet either. You, you probably imply that there's a night sky, which probably has stars and planets on it. And there's a whole other universe full of richness and life and all kinds of stuff. But you don't have to actually individually think about each one of those planets and plants on the everything. You can just infer that. You don't need to consciously do it all. Right? So there's, this, there's these massive universes that are just as big as our universe here, but they take up no space here. That's other dimensions. Now come back to our world, our world here. We don't actually know the nature of our universe. We could very well have been dreamed up by someone laying on a beach somewhere, just daydreaming and thought for a second about some person in the year Four trillion, two hundred million, uh, and whatever, in a galaxy far, far away, they thought about them doing something, and we could just be the, the incidental stuff, the implied rest of the universe. Because whenever, whenever there's a story, there's always an implied rest of the universe. And I think that's actually probably the best chance um, of what the nature of our existence is. We're probably just like either a something in a story or just someone, some thing thought us up and poof, we're here. And to them, we're nothing. Just like to us, a story is nothing. It's not nothing. It's a story. It's, a, it's something you think about. But to our universe, that has no effect on us other than on our thoughts, like on the individual thinking about it. So that's a whole other set of dimensions, uh, like above where we are, where someone could have their whole, their whole, their whole own set of three dimensions, or two dimensions, or a million dimensions, or whatever, and they're just thinking in their mind about some piece of this universe somewhere, and here we are. So, <clears throat> inside this book you're reading, there are probably other books, and the people probably tell each other stories. So there's more, just like infinite piles and piles of universes and worlds and dimensions inside this. And who knows where we come in this giant pile of infiniteness. We're just smacks. This is a little speck of nothing somewhere in it. Um, I don't know if that helps to explain how, how multiple dimensions are explainable, but hopefully that does. Now, one interesting thing about this is it does explain the, the nature of the universe in terms of physics and in terms of like 
religion, like a god. Because the universe would have been just spontaneously created by someone thinking about it. And that, and there's a good chance that we would be somehow in their image. Uh, not necessarily us, but something in the universe, anyway. Anyway, I think that's also, chances are, that's what God is. And that's why God doesn't really care about us, it's, you know, isn't really here all the time doing stuff for us, because they, they just thought us up. And then they weren't thinking, ah, I'm going to punish those people by having them have difficult lives. They were just thinking about an interesting story. And then implying that other interesting, rich stories were going on in the world. And that involves suffering and success and ups and downs and all this stuff that, that would be here in the universe. <clears throat> and uh, it's, I mean, it gets kind of weird if you keep thinking about, like, okay, you think about the person who was thinking about us, and then you think about the person who made their universe, and you go up, like, a quadrillion levels. Which, why wouldn't there be? Why not, right? What is that thing? Because, like, every, every time you think about a universe, you're probably changing what a human being would be a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but then after, like, billions of regurgitations of the same, you know, copies of copies, who knows what you end up with? You just get this giant <clears throat> evolution of idea. But one thing, one restriction on all this is that, generally speaking, when people create a story... They imply that the universe makes sense. So that all the implied stuff, like, it, you know, it has to somehow make sense. So we're here, we, you know, we dig in the ground and find fossils of humans, older humans than almost humans, and then we, we have this big fossil record of, of evolution and things. And that's, that could have very easily been incidentally created by the person creating this universe kind of not even really thinking about it, but just implying that the universe makes sense. So we would be here for a reason. Like, not for a reason, but like, there would be something that came to a point that got us. We wouldn't just like, spring up out of nothing. Even though the universe would have sprung up out of nothing. Well, not out of nothing, but out of something that occupies di different dimensions. Like, all this stuff here, all these dimensions would have sprung up from another dimension. And this stuff here, would be literally nothing in relation to that. Just like the story inside the book takes up no space for us. Even though it's a universe just as big as ours, in many universes even. Alright, hopefully that explains some of this uh, multi-universe, at least how I think about it. Alright.